can use a thing at taste. Do you think you could catch it? Let's see. Oh, so close. So close. Are we live? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on YouTube, we're doing it. Oh, there we go, okay. Whenever you're ready. All right, it's four. It's four? Let's do it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Sarah Cray, but that's my part. Thank you so much for being here with me today. We are Hold on, your, your mic is not functioning. Oh, give us a minute for our mic, you guys. Hi, Marie, Jessica, Robin. Is it working? We're back in business. We're back in business? Okay. Marcy says, I'm no longer into painting. I'm here for the baby. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for Loretta this month. Um, if you don't know what Let's Make Art Matter is, what we do is every month in the subscription box, we include a pre-addressed and pre-stamped postcard, watercolor postcard, and a little info card of the person we're sending to that month. Um, the whole idea is just to spread a little bit of love and support and kindness um, because art is really powerful and healing and wonderful. And I think that if we can kind of come together as a community and support one another, um, it can do some really amazing things. So. Well said. Hey, well, thank you. My husband's Mike. Michael is working the cameras. Hello, everyone. This is my baby. That's Bill Sr. <laughs> yeah, that's what Michael calls him. <laughs> um, and we are going to paint some beautiful hearts. I'm, I'm waiting for like a... Ooh. Oh, sorry. I was reading comments. Baby, paint. those are... Wow. <laughs> Wait, try again, sorry. Okay, we're gonna paint some beautiful hearts. Aww. And I thought hearts would be great because in our little info card here, you would see that she would get carefully drawn hearts um, from her grandson. And I thought it would be really sweet to send her family some carefully painted hearts to know that um, we're thinking about them. Um, Cause she, she passed away a bit ago and um, we just wanna send them some love. And I feel like, I've never met her, but I feel like me and Loretta are one in the same because she said, her secret to living so long because she lived to be 105. Holy cow. Was to eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I understand this woman and she understands me. So. Can someone do some science to support that, please, so I can <laughs> rationalize my habit? There's got to be some. Yeah. Okay. So we are using the paints from our April subscription box. Specifically, I'm using burnt orange, deep yellow, fuchsia, and amethyst for the colors. But of course, you guys are free to change up the colors you use. You're free to paint whatever you want. This is totally up to you. Um, we want to give you guys that freedom to kind of play around. And I have my round six here. And we are going to do a very similar technique that we did our carrots. I thought the carrots project that we did earlier in the month was super fun. I love that te technique, so whenever I can use it, I'm going to. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our round six. Hit it off the side of the cup. And we're going to go ahead and paint a heart using just water. Now it's probably going to be hard to see even like you guys that are painting with me. Um, so I kind of like look from the side to see the glare and then I'm gonna drop water in, I mean paint in. And sometimes it moves a lot and sometimes it doesn't and that's okay. If it doesn't move a lot, you gotta be like, come on little fella. Come on little buddy. Come on little buddy, move around for me. And sometimes when you draw hearts, the first go around can be a little bit wonky there's nothing wrong with reshaping them. 
That's a pretty solid heart. That's a good one. Oh, thanks. And then right away, you want to work really quick for this technique to work. I'm going to move into my next heart, and I'm going to go ahead and let the hearts touch so those colors start to blend together. And then I'm going to drop in orange. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm also looking to see if I have any questions on Facebook. Uh, Joe Ellen, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your last name. Nirkanen says that I sound sweet. Oh. Joe, I am sweet. He is very sweet. <laughs> I like him at least. Okay. Hello, Dawn. Dawn's from Seattle. She said hello from Seattle. Hello. Okay. Now I'm going to do my next heart, and now I kind of have to be aware of spacing. I probably should have started the left heart a little bit more to the side to fit two more. Do you think I should do one or two more? Mm, one big one. One Okay, I'll do one more because I think two would throw the composition off. So I'm just going to do one more heart here. And go ahead and let these colors just run. It's so fun to see the different textures. There's always an element of surprise. And then I'm gonna drop in my fuchsia. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's that's a so good one. good. It's so good. Sarah, uh, Joanne says sometimes after painting with plain water, she finds it hard to see. Is she not? Is she not putting enough on? Sometimes painting with plain water, like it's hard to see the water on the paper. I'm not sure. I would say probably brighter light might help. Yeah, make sure, like sometimes even what I have used, if like I can't find the glare, is I'll pull out my phone and put the flashlight on to put a strong light on my paper, and then it's easier to see the glare of the water. Mm -hmm. um, Abby wants to know what brush I'm using. I am using a round six brush. That's it. Keenan? This is a Keenan. I can't put the face up, but just imagine Keenan's face. <laughs> and these are our new wonderful watercolor brushes. I guess I will be talking about them later this week, but we have our own watercolor brushes and they are wonderful to work with. So that's what I'm using. That's why the handle is different. They're wonderful. I, I've been present for the whole picking and you pick right. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna drop a little bit more color in there because you know, why not? And then I thought a really fun element that we can add onto this because also it said that Loretta really liked to sew and stitch was if we used our Micron pen that came in the subscription box and do little stitch marks around the composition. So, Oh, okay, I have a question here. Michelle asks, what is your best tip for those of us who still struggle painting loose? My best tip for you is when you paint something, set a timer, do it quick. Set like, say like, I'm gonna paint a flower in five minutes or one minute and keep going down on time because then it's not necessarily about um, trying for it to be like perfect. It's more about just getting the project done and it's a great way to practice um, just like being quick and loose. So if you have like scratch paper, even the back of your watercolor paper and leftover paints in your pan, give yourself a timer, just start painting. And then if you do that more and more, then you'll be more comfortable um, being fast. And I think I associate fastness with looseness. So that's that would be my tip. Uh, my non-professional opinion is to care less. Maybe <laughs> yeah. go at it, yeah. pretend like you're just practicing. Yeah. That's something I've done too where um, sometimes I get kind of worked up if I'm teaching like a, a project and I kind of have to do mental tricks with myself and be like, it's just a piece of paper. This this isn't gonna be anything. The worst thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna throw it away. And then it's more like, let's just play and experiment and then I'm not so kind of tense about it. Yes, Michael, question. Um, Sarah, Debbie, oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. Why? Wow, where's Niac? Uh -huh. Wants to know if brushes are available on your site now? They should be available on our site. I was told. If someone from Let's Make Art is watching, We're sorry. and I'm wrong, 
please, I'm so sorry. If they are watching and I'm right, then can you link it? Okay. Um, oh, people are asking about Arlo. He's sleeping. We have an official let's make art comment. Uh, they're not quite available yet. End of the week, hopefully. Oh, dang, I thought they were on. Well, you guys just keep an eye out. Okay. Let's get back to our painting. Okay. So I'm gonna do the stitch texture just using, or pattern, just using my Micron pen, which came into the, the April box. And I'm just gonna do little lines across the thing. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I am not a sewer or a stitcher. So I have no idea if this is accurate, but this kind of gives the impression of like sewing. Oh yeah. Doesn't it? Oh yeah. Michael, my husband here, films quilting tutorials for Missouri Star, and so he'll know. He that, sees that all the time. That looks exactly right. Yeah? Yeah. Is that what a sewing machine is? Oh, yeah. I thought about a high-quality sewing machine. Now, I also did these stitch marks on the heart as well, on the hearts, but you have to make sure your hearts are dry, or else you're going to get some fuzzy marks, like what happened there. So mm. that's is why the, I'm doing the outside ones first. Is that card the example with a micron? Yes. Okay. Um... Sue says that they're up on the website now. Oh. Oh, what's happening? Hmm. I've got some speed round questions if you're ready to field questions, or do you want me to wait till the end? Oh, let's do it now. Okay. Um, preferred type of salt for paintings? Uh, sea salt. I actually Any use... Any kind of coarseness? I use pink Himalayan. Actually, I really loved... We have this flaky sea salt that we use for when we cook chocolate chip cookies. Maldon, Florida Maldon, salt. Maldon, floor salt. Florida yeah, salt. And it had, it's like flat instead of like big and round. It was really wonderful to paint with. So when I um, paint on my own, that's kind of what I use. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, as a beginner, I struggle with too much water on my brush. Yes. Tips? Tips is to um, paint, hit your brush off the side of the cup. If there's still too much water, hit it on your paper towel a couple of times before you put it on your paper. Okay. Uh, next, quick, do you have any tips for watercoloring on non-watercolor paper? She doesn't have access right now. Or he, I don't know. She or mm, he. Like any kind of paper? Probably printer paper. Probably printer paper. Use less water. Okay, sweet. Um, what's different about the new brushes? What's different about the new brushes? Yeah, what makes them special? Well, for me, I think um, they're, they're really good quality, very similar to the other brushes that we have. Um, I think that we just wanted to play with being able to create our own brushes that you guys can play with, being able to choose the colors and all that fun stuff. Um, they're similar in how they hold water and they snap back, um, which is one of my favorite things about watercolor brushes. There are some watercolor brushes that are really loose and moppy, and I really wanted ones that were like snap back Tighter. kind of thing. Last Tighter. one. Yeah. Um, what do you do with paintings that you don't give or sell away, but you don't want to throw them away? I... Want me to answer this yeah. for you? <laughs> like They're in a giant pile <laughs> and a big bookshelf downstairs. <laughs> I think you should be more generous and give them to people because <laughs> anyone would love a painting you made. Not just you, Sarah. Whole internet. That's true. I should be better about giving away the paintings, but I get... <laughs> I think we all go through this where we get a little bit insecure about, like, is this good enough to give away that kind of stuff. I have so many paintings that just stack up on my desk. But I also scan them and I use them digitally a lot too. Yeah, so that's, that's a great way to reutilize your paintings is to scan them and edit them and use them for your digital services. Um, I'm having a couple people who are, are having problems finding their pen in their April box. I would say go ahead and contact support at Let's Make Art. Yeah, so if you if you ordered the April subscription box, and the April projects had the carrots, has the uh, cowboy boots. What else was in there? <laughs> uh, duck. The duck. The duck we just did. Anyways, if your Micron pen isn't in there, then go ahead and email hello at letsmakeart.com, and our customer happiness team will help you. They're so wonderful. They'll we have the you best out. team. Okay, is that all? Is that my quick fire questions? Uh-oh, something happened. Hold, please. Just hang out for a second, Sarah. Okay. Do a little dance. And talk. Let me hear. Tisting? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. I don't Trying know if it froze accent. for you, but we're back. Okay. 
da, 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 da. seeing if there's any questions on Facebook. Um, Sharon says the brushes are there, but she can't add the product to her next sub order. Ooh, Sharon, go ahead and email our team. Just do a quick little help theme, and they will be able to help you add that to your order. Um, someone asked the best tip for shading with watercolors. Sarah does a very helpful exercise at the beginning of most tutorials that has to do with grading. Values. Value. Okay, so we have a beginner series on our YouTube channel where I go over different techniques. Um, so I would go ahead and take a look at those and see if you can find the ones where I go over values. But basically shading, I, I wonder if she's talking specifically on darker values or just shadows. She says, best tip when it comes to shading with watercolors, do you just layer the color on? Yes, you can layer it and make sure you're using a darker value and make sure their layers are dry in between um, adding on a new layer. Also, you can keep a portfolio of all of your old paintings and impress people. Oh yeah, you totally can do that too. That's how I got Michael to date me. It's <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> Except it was charcoal. <laughs> and she lied about being a skateboarder. <laughs> I was 13. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, now I'm just kind of waiting for this to dry before I do the pen marks on this. Da -da -da. Um, you're killing it, Sarah. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Arlo, you're killing it too. Robin asks if there's a particular scanner that I would recommend. I have an Epson. I can't remember the number. Do you remember? Seven. I'm pretty sure we actually have that information somewhere because somebody's asked me that before. It's a not expensive Epson. It's like a little flatbed scanner. The only thing, the thing with scanners um, is the biggest bed you can usually find is nine by 12, I'm pretty sure. So if you paint larger than that, that's where it just gets difficult. But I use my Epson and I use Photoshop to edit my paintings after I scan them. Jen Wolf, any hints for fuzzy edges on your paint? Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit in the duck tutorial where I've noticed actually that if I do this technique where I drop the water in first and then the paint, the edges will stay sharp. If I go straight with strong paint and not a lot of water and put that directly on my paper, that's when the fuzzy edges will happen. Wonderful. Okay. 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 Well, let's see if this is dry. Yeah, it's getting dry. Okay, I'm gonna do my lines around the edges of the hearts. That pink is wet, I can see it. The yeah, corner. this is wet and the top of the yellow is still wet because it's still, and how you can tell is if it still glares on the light. While you're doing this. Also, if it starts to bleed when you put pen down onto it. <laughs> true, true. Um, do you have a favorite pan paint? Oh no. What? Okay, I smeared because the pink was still wet and I put my wrist in it. So this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my round two brush and I'm going to grab some pink and I'm going to make a little heart here. And we're just going to do hearts around the whole thing. Perfect. And I would just like to say that if you are a beginner and you find yourself smearing your paints a lot, I would like you to know that I do this very regularly. And I just figure out ways to make it part of the composition or I use a magic eraser to clean it up, but that was a little too strong. So I'm just gonna add some small hearts around it. Ambiance. I think my yellow got sucked into my uh, orange. That's okay. Those little hearts look like butterflies to me. Oh, they kind of do. You can actually totally make them into butterflies with your micron pen. Sarah, it was kind of during the chaos, but do you have a favorite pan paint? Pan paint. Like cake? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I use a mixture of Daniel Smith and Winsor and & Newton and uh, the Prima, the Art Philosophy Confections. I would say those are probably my three most pan-used paints. Crayola. Crayola. 
It's my jam. <laughs> Washable. Oh, Martha asked what orange did I use? This is burnt orange. That well, was a happy little accident. That is so cute. Isn't that cute? I'm yeah. like, gosh, that's that's really cute. Oh, I love how it came out. Lori said that she's hoping I'm getting sleep. Thank you, Lori. I I mean, I sleep just in two hour chunks. It's fine. It's fine. One day I will sleep more than three hours at a time. Eighteen years from now. It will be glorious. Can't wait. Okay. So now I'm going to, like ninja style, put marks on this because now I have wet dots all over my uh, painting. So you just gotta be careful. That orange bleed looks so good. And on both of these, right? Yeah. Doesn't that look so cool? I can hear a little baby breathing. Can you hear him now? I was just talking too much. That's why you guys couldn't hear him. Give the people what they want. All right, I'll stop talking. Ooh, that's still wet. It's starting to fuzz. Marcy says her accidents look more like crime scenes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcy, I'm going to be honest. When I first started teaching, I didn't know that the technical term for these kinds of things are called like blooms. And I call, I would say like bleeding and explosions. <laughs> so I use, my descriptions used to be pretty violent. I think you got your finger in one of those hearts. Oh yeah, I did. That's okay. Your mediocre ninja. Oh. <laughs> See my face. <laughs> uh, Lacey says, how do you know when to stop painting, like when you have done enough? Um, that is an excellent question. I think I try to stop before I start to feel frustrated. When I start to feel frustrated, that's when I know that I need to stop and walk away. A lot of the times you just have to look at your painting um, from being away from it for a bit to like understand what's really going on. And usually when you're frustrated, you tend to overwork because you're just like, oh, I need to fix this, I need to fix this. And you just do layer and layer and it gets messy. So if you feel yourself getting angry, maybe be like, I really need a cookie right now. Put your paintbrush, go away for a bit and then come back to it. And it'll be easier to see what you need for it to feel done. Uh, I have a very sweet comment. Yeah. Boone LM says, I'm a nurse working in a COVID ICU, but on my days off, all three of my kids join me to paint with you. So fun and relaxing. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us. Oh, well, thank you so much for working and um, putting yourself in danger to help other people. Um, we really need you as a country right now and we appreciate it. And I love that you do something with your kids all together. Um, I, I think it's kind of amazing how healing art can be, especially during this time. So you guys are awesome. Okay. Um, that is my little painted sewed postcard. Um, of course, if you are not a subscriber, you can absolutely still participate in this. You can go ahead and email our customer happiness team at hello at let's make art and they'll share with you the address if you would like to paint something on your own and send it to them. Um, again, you guys can paint something else instead of this. This is just ideas and a way for us to kind of remind you, take the time, pause, let's make art for somebody else. Um, because when we can do things as a community, it can be really powerful and wonderful. Um, if there is somebody that you know that could use a little bit of cheering up, um, that would be great. You can, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Nominate. You can nominate them on our website. Just go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom, and there's a nominate there for our Let's Make Art Matter. And again, we're sending these to Loretta's family. Um, she was 105 and she passed away um, a few months ago. 
And I know that we had a, we asked you guys not to mail the postcards last month because of COVID-19, but we received information that mailing postcards is fine. So you guys are free to mail your postcards, um, put those in the mail. And there are a couple questions about how to mail these safely, like so they don't get ruined in the mail. Um, some people do a spray on top of them, like a Krylon uh, spray. We also can use the, um, these come in a little plastic sleeve and some people put them in the plastic sleeve and just have the post office um, like stamp the outside. Some post offices take that and some don't. So I don't wanna say that like, that's the sure way to do it because some won't. Um, another way is you can put it in a card, like an envelope. You can put it in an envelope and send, send it if you really don't want it to get damaged. Um, or you can just leave it as is and cross your fingers and be like, you know what? It's gonna be okay. I can honestly say that the people that are receiving these, I know that sometimes we get insecure about our own work. Like, is this good enough to send? Would someone really like it? And I promise you that it doesn't matter. Those things don't matter because it's more, it's not about po the postcard. It's the fact that we're taking the time to show somebody that we are thinking about them we care about them and we love them. That's what that means. So even if you don't feel confident in your painting skills, people still love it and they appreciate it because it's more the thought, it's the time that you took. So um, I know it's scary, but you guys can do it. Be brave and um, send it. And I think that's all I gotta say. Um, I have one announcement to make, which is, the Nicole's lettering, her Let's Make Art Matter for lettering, she's gonna do a live tomorrow at 2 p.m. And she's also using watercolors in it. So if you guys uh, wanna do another fun project with Nicole, who's a, one of our fantastic lettering teachers, you can tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m. and join us. She's also a great human. She is, I like her. Um, if you need any of these art supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Um, if you need the address for Loretta's family that we're sending this to, you can go ahead and email us at hello at letsmakeart.com. You guys are so great. <laughs> I think that's all I got to say. That's it. Thank you for painting with me, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.